We do have a major malfunction. We felt something seriously amiss for a long time. Now in the blood of seven, a number sacred to the Cherokee and mystic to many of the world's peoples, we have clear warning. To survive, we must set ourselves right and reconnect. Song Twice Sung I stop weaving my basket, contemplate the pattern of Selu. I reach 400 miles beyond to our daughter who is about to bring forth her firstborn in the shadow of the great Smokies, the mother mountains where I myself was born and ancestors made their home, planted corn, raised children. Alex and her husband Jack are waiting, waiting, waiting for this baby and for their own who will come in mid-fall. It's now mid-March. Time to prepare the fields, begin the cycle of planting, growth, harvest, and our family waits as families from time immemorial have waited for the mysterious news. Meanwhile, we work at the tasks at hand try to cope with the stress of a world teetering on a turning point. What a comfort to know that in the dark safety of our daughter's wombs, the eternal cycle is continuing. The seed has drawn strength from the warm, wet place of its planting in the fullness of time. First the blade and then the ear, and then full corn shall appear. In blood and hope, in pain and joy, a child will be born a gift from the Creator. Come, ye thankful people, come. And we will come, the whole family. I'll go first, my husband a week later. My bag is packed, my grandmother bundle, a gathering of small gifts is ready too, except for the primary birth gift, which I am still thinking about. Paul and I hope that when the season comes for us to depart from this world, we will hear our family singing yet another harvest safely home, and that these great children, grandchildren too, will have peace to live, peace to ripen, peace to be thankful, peace. But where is the peace? Ensuring it is our task. What birth gift should I offer to my grandchildren? What will help them survive this teetering of the world? Looking at my basket, I see what it should be. Selu's heart, the sweet heart of the corn, so fragile it's cut out of store-bought meal, so good that meal is dross without it. My grandchildren must have the whole corn, the grain and its story. They will be corn-fed like all of their mountain ancestors have been. Mountain babies literally used to cut their teeth on corn, on a ring made from dry kernels. I don't know how to make one safely. But as soon as they can eat solid food, these babies will know the corn mother, the sweet taste and scent of her heart, probably in cornbread made with stone ground meal, no pasteurized pack for them. Maybe we can walk in the cornfields like my grandfather and I used to do during their tender blade years. As soon as they are old enough to take the dried corn and eat it, I will give them a multicolored ear and trace the first outline of Selu's story in their mind. In the beginning, their creator made our mother earth. Then came Selu, grandmother corn. Her children circled round her like the kernels on her body. Touch them, red, black, white, yellow, round and round. No one first or last, all in harmony. Each one different, each one good, just like you. When the children did their part, when they helped her and remembered their manners, Selu fed them. When the children forgot their part, she went away until they remembered. Selu says, when you take, always give back. 
say thank you. So thank you. So does anybody have any questions? I just wow people every time. I am always so amazed. Well, I appreciate the opportunity to come to read you. I hope you enjoyed the time that we spent together. And I encourage you to come to American Indian Indigenous Week next week. Um, we have events almost every day. Uh, starting Monday through Sunday. Saturday and Sunday we have uh, the second powwow that we've had on campus and it will be in the RPAC in the Tom W. Davis Special Events Gym. The grand entry, the doors open at 11, the grand entry starts at 1. Uh, Trent is head male dancer, another student who is doing uh, vet med Silu um, is going to be a head female dancer. So we have two students who are part of head staff this year. And there will be a drum from Kansas, a drum from South Dakota, and an alumnus who also has a southern drum. So we're very excited. We hope that you will come. Uh, grand entry starts at 1. And then a second grand entry on Saturday will be at 6. And then, again, grand entry will start on Sunday. Anything you would like to add? Come on, see it. <laughs> if you have any questions, I'll hang around for a couple of minutes. And it's free. Oh, all events are free, by the way. I always forget to say that. I just assume everyone knows. But I can hang around for a couple of minutes if you have any questions. Please feel free to come up and talk to me. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.